This keyboard is just $65, and yet somehow it has an 8,000 hertz polling rate. It's the latest version of Keychron's C2 Pro. It's got a full-size retro design, hot swappable switches, but the biggest potential deal breaker is that the connection is wired only. So is this one of the best budget keyboards that you can buy, or does it simply have too many trade-offs? Let's find out. Now, Keychron did send this keyboard over to me for review, but as always, they had no say in how I covered it. You can find affiliate links for this down in the video description if you decide that you'd like to pick one up for yourself. And with all that, let's jump into the details. Starting with build and design, this keyboard has an old school look that brings you back to the early days of computer keyboards. When I first learned how to use a keyboard in elementary school in the 90s, I'm pretty sure the keyboard looked pretty much exactly like this. The whole board is an off-white tan color with two different shades of keycaps. Inside the box, there is also a single red escape key, which you can swap on if you'd like to add a little bit of extra character to the board. The body is fully made of basic plastic, which I'm assuming is ABS, though the website literally just says plastic. The board weighs 976 grams, which is just over two pounds. This certainly isn't light, but for a board this large, it doesn't feel very heavy either. Here are the full dimensions of the board in case you want some other specifics. Overall, it's a pretty standard size for a full-size keyboard. On the bottom, you'll find a few rubber bumpers to avoid sliding, along with dual-stage adjustable feet. These feet allow you to go between the standard 4.8 degree typing angle up to 7.8 degrees or 10.2 degrees. Since this keyboard is on the taller side, you may want to consider a wrist rest to avoid straining and to achieve the most comfortable experience. The key layout is a full-size design with a proper number pad that includes an oversized zero key, plus your full complement of arrow keys and navigation buttons. Across the top, there's a complete function row with spaced out sections like you find on many traditional full-size boards. Above the navigation buttons sit keys for screenshot, access to your assistant or search, plus an RGB mode control key. In the box, there's also an extra keycap for a lock button if you want to swap that on to one of these spots instead. The only thing that's a little disappointing with this layout is that there are no keys above the number pad, just lights for the num lock, caps lock, and to show whether you're in the Mac or Windows modes. There's also no knob or other more advanced controls up here, but that's pretty much to be expected at this price point. For typing experience, this board has keycaps in an OSA profile. They have a modern look with some rounded corners. They're still a cylindrical half pipe shape, but they're much more comfortable to me than the very squared off versions on many other boards. They're also made of double shot PBT, which means that they should hold up to shine over time, which is awesome to see on such a cheap keyboard as they easily could have skimped out and gone with ABS plastic to save some money. Internally, this board uses a tray mount design, which is more cost effective than a gasket mount that you'll see on many high-end keyboards these days. The result is that you won't see any movement when I press down firmly on the board like this, as you would on those gasket mount keyboards. Tray mounts also typically make typing feel more rigid and can make it more hollow as well. To counteract that, Keychron included several layers of films, foams, and pads, as they do on pretty much every one of their keyboards these days. The result is good, though typing does feel a bit stiff, and there's definitely some hollowness, especially on the spacebar, which you'll hear very soon in the typing test. The switches are hot swappable and feature three different types of Keychron Super Switches. There's the Linear Super Reds, which is what I'll be demoing today, plus Tactile Super Browns and Tactile Super Bananas. You can also get this board with some silent switches, but interestingly only on Amazon. There you will find the Silent Red option and Silent Banana as well. Now let's do a quick typing test to show you exactly what my Super Red switches sound like.
The typing here is poppy and firm from that tray mount design. The red switches are smooth with a nice middle of the road level of force needed. It's honestly not a bad typing experience. That spacebar though leaves a lot to be desired. If you take the spacebar off, you can see that they clearly made an effort to cut down on the sound by adding in some foam, but it didn't really work very well. The spacebar is still quite loud. Assuming that you can get past that, it's a good typing experience, especially for the price, but it's not going to compete with some much more expensive keyboards, even those in Keychron's own lineup. To go one step further on the spacebar, I'm going to repeat an experiment I did on a recent Logitech keyboard video. I swapped in a single silent switch to the spacebar to show just how different the typing sounds are if you're able to rein in that spacebar sound. By doing so, the keyboard immediately sounds much more pleasant, and you get to appreciate the sounds of the main keys more than if you have that loud spacebar clacking in between every single word. This result is so much better in my opinion. This also highlights how you could swap in a full set of silent switches or another type of switches. And even with the cost of those switches factored in, this keyboard is still going to be cheaper than a lot of the competition, which is pretty sweet. For customization, this keyboard is compatible with QMK and VIA if you'd like to use those open source platforms. It's also compatible with Keychron Launcher, a web-based application made by Keychron that lets you make similar changes. In both instances, you won't need to install any programs on your computer, and the changes that you make will be saved to the keyboard itself so that you can bring them over to another device as well. Using the Launcher web app, in addition to changing simple key mappings, you can create custom macros, adjust the backlighting, and even utilize a gaming-focused feature called Last Key Priority. For backlighting, there's south-facing RGB backlights with 22 pre-programmed effects and non-shine through keycaps. You can control the effects with the light bulb key at the top right of the board, and you can turn backlighting off using function plus tab or function plus that same light bulb key. There's controls on F5 and F6 to change your backlight brightness, plus there are several key commands to adjust the RGB as well. Here is a full set of controls in case you're curious. If you prefer, you can also just use that Keychron Launcher software to edit the backlighting as well. Connectivity is pretty simple since this keyboard is wired only. Inside the box is a high quality braided USB-C to C cable, which is color matched to the board and works with the USB-C port on the back left of the board as well. The cable also includes a USB-A adapter, which gives you solid flexibility depending on what type of device you're connecting to. Next to the USB-C port on the back is a switch to toggle between Mac and Windows modes. There are also Mac and Windows keycaps in the box, plus this board is compatible with Linux as well. Over that wired connection, this keyboard manages to have an 8000 Hz polling rate, which is why you'll see 8K in the title. Polling rate is how frequently your keyboard communicates with your computer, so this board should have pretty low latency even in a fast-paced gaming setting, which is very cool for such a cheap board. In the Keychron Launcher web app, you can set the polling rate anywhere from 125Hz, which is standard if you were using Bluetooth, all the way up to the maximum of 8000Hz. Thankfully, it does default to the highest 8000Hz polling rate, so that you don't have to do anything special to get that ultra-low latency. Now, I can't think of a ton of reasons why you'd want to decrease the connection, but perhaps if you're using an older computer and it's having some trouble taking in that much information, you may want to lower it to a more reasonable number. For value and pricing, as I mentioned at the outset, this keyboard retails for just $65, which is pretty wild for how much it offers. Outside of wireless connectivity, there's not a whole lot else that I'd want from a keyboard like this. If you decide that you want to go for those silent switches on Amazon, you will have to pay $5 more, or about $70 total, which is still a solid deal. Some additional exciting news, if you're in the US at least, is that Keychron now has a US-based warehouse that's stocking many of their products, including this one. As a result, you can get free fast shipping on most of their products for any order over $69. Now, since this keyboard is just under that amount, you could add in an accessory or a Keychron mouse, for example, in order to get the free shipping rather than having to pay the $10 to $20 shipping charges that have been the norm with Keychron up until this point. 
This is a really welcome change for me as paying those shipping charges have always been a little bit frustrating because it makes the cost of their products higher than they seem. Now, if you wanna find something to get over that free shipping threshold, try checking out their silicone palm rests, which could go well with this high profile board, or perhaps check out their M4 mouse or the larger M6 mouse. Both of these I've reviewed on the channel and they're both really great in very different ways. Now to wrap this up with the differentiators and deal breakers, this board has a full size design with a proper full size number pad. It has an old school look with classic colors that will definitely bring back some nostalgia for some of the older viewers out there. The keycaps are really solid with PBT plastic and a good shape that I'm a fan of personally. The switches are hot swappable, giving you the flexibility to make this board your own or to just make the spacebar a bit quieter. There's RGB backlighting available. The polling rates are up to 8,000 Hertz, which makes this a pretty awesome discount gaming option. You can also customize your board with QMK and VIA or with Keychron's launcher web app. Both of those options are web-based and don't require you to install any software in order to make changes. Finally, this keyboard is cheap at just $65, which honestly feels like a bargain. For potential deal breakers, the typing is definitely on the loud side, especially that spacebar, which is in dire need of a switch change or some other type of modification. It uses a tray mount, so typing can feel a little bit stiff. The connectivity is wired only, which limits the scenarios that you can use this board. And finally, there's no extra keys above the number pad, which takes away some flexibility and customization potential. This keyboard is a very cool modern take on an old school, very standard keyboard design. By throwing in features like the 8K polling, RGB backlighting, and hot swappable switches, Keychron has created a keyboard that will feel just as at home on my parents' desk as on my own. Now for $65, it's pretty hard to argue that this isn't an incredible value, as long as you can get past the sound of the space bar and the wired only connectivity. If those don't bother you, this is a great keyboard for the price. Now, as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.